Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, July 19th City Council meeting. Coon Rapids continues to have the second highest credit rating possible from Moody's Investor Service, and that high rating means lower borrowing costs for projects. On Tuesday night, the City Council awarded the sale of more than $20 million in general obligation bonds to J.P. Morgan Securities. The company submitted the lowest bid with an interest rate of 3.1% for 20 years. The money will fund a variety of projects around the city, including a new fire station and this year's street reconstruction program. The city's favorable AA1 credit rating is in the top 15% of cities, counties, and school districts across the country. Moody says Coon Rapids' key strengths include robust reserves and a manageable amount of debt. The union representing Coon Rapids Police Sergeants has reached a new labor agreement with the city. Similar to a previous agreement reached by the union representing police officers, it calls for a 3% wage increase this year and next year. There's also a market rate adjustment of 0.85% in both years to keep wages competitive with other police departments. Both the east and west water treatment plants will be getting new roofs. On Tuesday night, the City Council awarded the contract for the project to McPhillip Brothers Roofing Company in the amount of $785,000. Construction is expected to begin soon and should be finished by the end of the year. And that's a quick recap of the July 19th City Council meeting. As always, you can find the full meetings on cable or the CTN Coon Rapids YouTube channel. This week, the golf spotlight comes to Minnesota. The 3M Open tees off this week in Blaine. With the Pro Tour right in our backyard, spectators are out in full force, not passing up the chance to see the best golfers in the world. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to come out and see the best players in the world so close to home. Uh, so we weren't going to miss it. You know, we wanted to be here and I wanted Jay to see the best players and, and how good they are. While many have seen these golfers on TV before, seeing them with their own eyes just hits different. You see them on TV and you never know like the size, how big they are, small they are, tall they are. Um, you know, see to see them in person just gets you that perspective. Sometimes a perspective they weren't expecting. It's, it's kind of funny. You think uh, one of the pros, you know, might be six foot five, and the guy's like five foot nine, right? So it's just cool to see them and see how far they hit the ball and the way they can work the ball left or right, whatever, is, is, is really cool. This year marks the tournament's fourth time here in Minnesota. For those who've experienced it before, it's another chance to see their heroes and grow the game. I want to see Larry Fitzgerald today and Ricky Fowler, all those type of guys. Try and get uh, more autographs than last time, because last time I didn't really get a lot of autographs. But and try and get more pictures this time. I want to bring out my two and a half year old son, Jay, to come out to his first PGA Tour event. I grew up coming out with my dad all the time. Uh, probably started when I was about two, and uh, so I just wanted to continue on this tradition. So we're excited to be here. Tournament play starts on Thursday and goes through Sunday. Tickets are available online at 3mopen.com. Officials expect close to 15,000 fans per day. Neighborhoods across the city will soon be preparing to host their own block party for Night to Unite, which is the first Tuesday in August. Night to Unite is an annual event which brings neighbors together for some food and family fun, all with crime prevention in mind. The aim for Coon Rapids police officers is to strengthen community partnerships by making stops at every party in the city. Every year um, we get to see more and more people in the community um, that we don't get to see on a regular basis. Um, I have people come up to me that I was at their party five, six, seven years ago and they remember the interaction and remember what we talked about. There are around 70 block parties already registered with the city. The goal for the police department is to get a police car and fire truck out to every party, but your party needs to be registered with the city. Night to Unite is Tuesday, August 2nd. The deadline to register your block party is Wednesday, July 27th. No late registrations will be accepted. Most parties take place between 5 and 8 p.m. If you have questions, call the police department at 763-767-6481 or go to the city's website, coonrapidsmn.gov slash night to unite.
Four touch, four touch. Close the space, close the space. There are over 950 teams playing in this year's USA Cup at the National Sports Center in Blaine. The largest soccer tournament in North America generates about $25 million for the local economy. It's exciting and there's a lot of energy here in Blaine. The tournament has welcomed back international teams for the first time since 2019. When you bring people from different, you know, countries, it adds more energy, vibrancy. You walk the campus and hear all the different languages. Girls and boys teams from 18 different countries compete against U.S. teams from 22 states, including Minnesota. Get an American visa, it's a really big miracle. For coach Rudolf Bolazhenitz, who coaches the 16 and under boys team from Ukraine, getting visas to play soccer in the United States was something unthinkable just weeks ago. We have here 55 people. It's a soccer team of boys and girls and plus coaches and parents. So it kind of was really, really tough to get it in the war time. The team was helped by two friends from Minnesota who were on a mission. The idea probably was formed about 10 weeks ago. Edgar Matson and his friend and former college roommate Peter Waller traveled to western Ukraine to bring back a soccer team. One of our biggest challenges was getting visas for the boys. Um, and USA Cup helped us and the U.S. Embassy was very, very gracious in Latvia. Madsen and company had special t-shirts made for the teams. So that's the theme of our trip is this is our dream. A dream of hope for an end to the war in Ukraine. Coach Rudolph also happens to be a pastor with a mission to bring badly needed supplies back to Ukraine. I am not only the coach, I'm the director of Charitable Foundation uh, Family of Christ, and we are help for refugees, orphans, uh, family in risk. And this is not just about soccer, it's to build relationship and to bring more hope for Ukraine nation. The Hope for Ukraine Youth Refugee Tour will make stops in Duluth and Rochester next week. Then they'll return to the National Sports Center on Monday, July 25th for a farewell celebration. For more on how you can help, go to sourcemn.org slash Ukraine Youth. The primary election is just a few weeks away and candidates are getting out the vote. This week, candidates running for two city council seats took part in a candidate forum. How have you and might you collaborate with others to get the best outcomes on important issues to benefit the public? The candidate forum, sponsored by the local chapter of the League of Women Voters, took place Wednesday night in the city council chambers. The three candidates for Ward 3 took turns answering prepared questions. There are also three candidates running for mayor, but only current mayor Jerry Cook participated. We will be airing the candidate forum in its entirety in the coming weeks on the CTN government channel on cable. It's also on our CTN Coon Rapids YouTube channel. The primary election, which is Tuesday, August 9th, is meant to narrow the list of candidates in each race to two. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you can't make it on Election Day, you can cast an absentee ballot at Coon Rapids City Hall. For more information, log on to mnvotes.org. Everything in this building is new. We replaced all the furniture. After working for more than a year on the project, the renovations on the nursing and business building at Anoka Ramsey Community College are nearly complete. This is uh, one of the skills labs for our students. Um, all of the classrooms here were, were built with active learning in mind. All the medical equipment is brand new. These are Hillrom beds, these are in all the hospitals. Sustainability measures were required on this $16.3 million project, which was funded through the state's 2020 legislative session. And you'll see dots in the glass. Bird glass was put into a number of windows. All the windows have low E glass, and the lighting used throughout the building is energy efficient as well. This is the largest room in, the, in this new building. This lecture room holds up to 82 students and can be scheduled for use by a number of departments, not just business and nursing. We have a lot of technology in these rooms, and it's, uh, it's neat. This is a simulation maternity room. This project has faced supply chain issues when it comes to technology. We will not get the technology we anticipated for this building probably until the end of this year. 
The new building will welcome students for the fall semester in August. They'll have to use the same technology they have today while the school waits for the enhanced tech to arrive. The summer concert series has resumed following a brief break for the 4th of July holiday. Raquel and the Wildflowers took the stage Thursday night at the Coon Rapids Dam. The band out of New York, which formed in 2019, blends the sound of country music with a rock and roll drive. If you missed the concert, watch for it in the coming days on our CTN community channel on cable. Five more concerts remain this summer. July 14th, Eric Christensen and his support group play the blues. On July 21st, it's the New Orleans brass and jazz sounds of the Dirty Shorts Band. And on July 28th, a little polka with the Shimoleski Fun Time Band. Moving to August on the 4th, Ecuador Manta plays Latin Fusion. And the concert series concludes August 11th with the Revolution 5, a Beatles tribute band. Here's a quick recap of the Tuesday, July 5th City Council meeting. The Coon Rapids Police Department officially welcomed its new leader this week. I, John Stanky. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. On Tuesday night, John Stanky was sworn in as the next police chief of the CRPD. Stanky grew up in Coon Rapids and has spent his entire law enforcement career with the department, first as a community service officer back in 1993, and most recently as a police captain. He calls it an honor and privilege to be trusted to lead the police department into the future. I think you all know I love this community and I love our department. Uh, I work in a law enforcement utopia for an agency staffed by the hardest working, most honest and ethical officers in the business. They make it easy to lead. Stanky says the level of trust and support that the police department receives from the community and elected officials is second to none. The police department has been successful in receiving a grant from the U.S. Department of Justice. The grant totals $24,000 and will be used to purchase protective vests to enhance officers' safety when encountering civil unrest, training helmets to be used by officers during simulated firearms and active shooter training, and PET scanners to read implanted microchips found in lost animals. The primary election is now just one month away and election judges are still needed. On Tuesday night, the City Council approved the appointment of election judges and set the salary at $11 an hour for regular judges and students, $13 for assistant head judges, and $15 an hour for head judges. If you are interested in becoming an election judge, contact the city clerk's office. Training is provided. And that's a quick recap of the July 5th City Council meeting. As always, you can find the full meetings on cable or the CTN Coon Rapids YouTube channel.